Welcome into Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV. We take a deep dive into all things boxing. We're talking about now the super middleweight. David Benavides moving up to light heavyweight this weekend, taking on Alexander Vostik. Of course, looking serious, intense, ready to go throughout the buildup to this fight. But is this a classic trap fight? Does the risk equal the reward? Jimmy Smith alongside Polly Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and Teddy Atlas joining us via Zoom. It's been talked about before, gentlemen, with as deep as the 175 pound division is. Is this a classic trap fight? Might he be looking ahead of this weekend? Polly, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's sort of a, what how the Brits call it, a banana peel fight, for sure. You know, I, I don't think Vazdi is a walk in the park, but so, you know, a guy with the experience Benavides has, he's young, he's a, he's a phenom, he's in his prime. I don't think that mentally he's in the point where he's going to take anybody lightly. You know, I, I don't think he assumes that there's any easy fights anymore at this point, right? Uh, sure, you're not getting, is there the possibility that you have a little bit of a letdown because uh, you didn't get Canelo, you were chasing the bigger fight, and this guy just won't fight, just, you've got to settle for these other fights. Maybe, mentally, it's a little bit disappointing. But, I mean, Vazdik gives you no reason to underestimate him. You know, his resume speaks for itself. He's a slippery, kind of crafty guy. Uh, he fights, he's long and tall. He's a natural light heavyweight. He knows how to fight long and tall. Southpaw, there, there's things you gotta be wary of and be prepared for. But Benavides never shows up unprepared. Uh, he's not one of those fighters. That why, it's why he's one of the best fighters in the world. It's because he's always mentally and physically prepared. But yes, of course, it's a banana peel kind of fight. Yeah, now Chris, you're a fan of Vostik. Yeah, depending on how much he has left, left. Yeah. you know, um, you know, he's had a couple fights recently, had some good wins. I think he had like four or five years off, something like that. Um, and then he came back and he's had a couple nondescript wins, but he's he's looked good. Um, he was always a very athletic guy, good, good athlete, physically built well for the weight class. It, you know, we mentioned that this is this is his natural weight class and, and David is moving up to fight him. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I think he has enough boxing ability, enough power, enough experience. Um, to push David Benavides in a way that we're going to get some answers to see if he's going to be a player at 175, if he, if he plans to. You know, David Benavides is saying that he's going to go back down to 68 after this. I don't know if that's really going to happen. You know, it's, it's hard to go back down to weight once you've moved up and put on some muscle, especially 68 to 75, seven pounds. That's, that's a, a bigger jump than some of the other weight classes. Um, and we'll see. And David is a big guy coming down from well over 200 pounds. So this is, uh, this is an interesting matchup, and I think we're going to get a lot of answers that night. Um, does, does David Benavides belong at 175? Can he handle a guy with the, the caliber of Vazdik, even if he is a little long in the tooth? We'll see. Now, Teddy, when you look at it, of course, you know, the picture behind us is David Benavides looking absolutely laser focused heading into this fight. Is that what you expect of him this weekend against Vazdik? He better be. He better be. Otherwise, the apple cart's getting upset. Um, it's it's going to get flipped over, and there's going to be a lot of apples uh, on the floor because there's a, there's a reason why he could overlook him. I mentioned it earlier that they have history. From all reports, five years ago, they boxed, they being Bozic and Benavides, uh, they boxed different times in their life, I know, but they boxed in a gym. And as I said, from all reports, Benavides had his way. He even dropped Bozic in the gym. And if he is partly looking to that to repeat itself, then yes, to your question, there is evidence with that. There, there's real tangible reason why he could overlook him if he's connecting that Bozik to the Bozik he's going to fight on Saturday night. And I'm not saying he is completely, but I'm saying it's a real good chance. We're dealing with human beings. It's a good chance that he's looking a little bad, or he's a little overconfident, possibly. And I know I love Benavides. I love him and his father, the approach. It's a serious approach. And they get in the ring, and they fight in a serious way to go get you, to go destroy you, if it's possible to destroy you. But at the end of the day, human beings, and you can't remove that part. They're not machines. And I think that there is, like I just said, a real possibility they overlook, even if they're not consciously, but subconsciously looking a little bit past them. I think it could be a problem. I really do.
Now, let's talk about that human element for a second. Canelo Alvarez's camp has made reference to issues Benavides has had in previous fights. Let's go over them. Uh, positive test for cocaine. He has missed weight before, showed up drunk at a DAZN event. He's been painted as unreliable when it comes to pay-per-view selling. Paulie, I mean, those are red flags. You don't want to ignore them completely, but has that been overblown? Under, you know, is it underappreciated? What's your thought on it? I don't know if it, you, those things are never overly overblown. I mean, they have to be reported, right? Uh, Benavides seems to always turn it around. You know, he seems to kind of, you know, sometimes go through these little hiccups and then he comes back, continues to impress in the ring, comes off like a guy who's mature. Then you kind of behind the scenes, you see, you see that he winds up having these little hiccups. I mean, time will only tell. Right now we can only judge him on his in-the-ring performances, and they have been stellar. Uh, and I think the older you get, usually you get a little bit wiser. You start to mature more, even if you're a little bit wilder when you're a little younger. So you assume that that is the route that Benavides is going. He just had a child uh, not that long ago, so usually that will also sort of focus you a little bit more as far as what are your responsibilities and what's important and what's not. So the effing around, so to speak, yep. on the side, Eh, it's probably a little bit less important as you get a little older, you get into this prime of your career and you've got a family to look after. I assume that he's going to put that all behind him. He's been looking great in the ring. Yeah, now, Chris, it's one of those things we've talked about here on this air about, for example, Ryan Garcia, and we're saying, oh, that oh, his, his mental issues are all made up. Look at how he looked against Devin Haney. Look, I've... You, you have you seen you fighters. You can't fill a PED test. Right, and then no, say, right yeah. but my point, yeah, it's very, very <laughs> true. Count. Uh, no, no, but this idea, no, this idea that because he won, his mental issues are all behind him. We've seen fighters, I've seen fighters win dope sick. I've seen fighters win with grievous injuries. I've seen fighters dealing with all kinds of out of ring and out of octagon issues come in and still find victory. Does it bother you, Chris, when, when the in-ring product starts fraying? Is that when you realize there's a problem? What's your thought on it? Well, yeah, that, that, that's the worry, right? Yeah. <laughs> but listen, guys, we're all wild. We're boxers. We fight for a living. We're fighters. We go into a ring in front of millions of people. We take our shirts off and we, and we bang our chest. We go punch another guy in the face for money. Yeah. Uh, we, we're all wild. We're, we're not just leaving that in the ring. That we have that outside the ring, too. With David Benavidez, I always said, like, I didn't make any money. I wasn't world champion until I was 30. If I had made a lot of money when I was 20, I would have done some really dumbass things, too. And I think that he's in a learning curve now. And, and to your point, champ, I think... You know, he's maturing through this process, which is a very, very difficult process. And we've seen guys fall apart, you know, i.e. Ryan Garcia recently. Yeah. Um, David's one of those guys that I think he's had his hiccups. He's made his adjustments. The cocaine thing was was five years ago at this point. Obviously, the, the uh, drinking on DAZN, you know, he came out with a great apology about that, owned up to it. You know, that shows that maturity. And you mentioned him having a son. You know, we've interviewed him on our air. He sounds mature. He sounds like he has the right mindset. Um, I think those are just hiccups along the way, being a young star who's, who's you know, budding and, and making a lot of money and just having a lot more experience um, or as the years go on. I'm, I'm seeing him progress to what I think he's ultimately going to be, which is, I mean, I think he's going to be the face of the sport if he can get some, keep these wins going. Uh, just legally, before we go to break, I want to say we've all cleaned up now. That was our younger days. We were wilder. We're all totally clean. Yeah, we don't fight anymore. So. Anyway, we don't fight anymore. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, is this the right path for Benavidez? Now it looks like the Canelo fight is in the rearview mirror. June 28th, live from the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C., WBA Super Featherweight World Champion Lamont Roach Jr. will defend his title against undefeated challenger, fearless Fergal McCrory of Ireland. Catch all the action live in Washington, D.C. on ProBox TV, or even better, download the ProBox TV app. World title on the line, ProBox TV, June 28th, Lamont Roach Jr. versus Fergal McCord. It's going to be a great fight, a homecoming fight for the champ, Washington, D.C., taking on the Irishman who loves to come forward and make it a brawl. It's going to be a great fight. Do not miss it. We will be ringside. We're talking now about David Benavidez, super middleweight, moving up to the light heavyweight division. This year, Michael Moore inducted into the Pro Boxing Hall of Fame standout light heavy, went over his resume. Great episode. Check it out on our Pro Box TV YouTube channel. We went over the inductees. When we talked about Michael Moore, Chris, you were talking about his accomplishments at light heavyweight really get him into the Hall of Fame, but moved up to heavyweight, became champion, of course. Um, of course, the upset loss, of course, to George Foreman. But this idea that light heavyweight could lead to heavyweight, is that where Benavides is thinking now that the Canelo fight in the rearview mirror, could he be thinking heavyweight? I don't know if he's thinking that. I, I haven't seen many, you know, 
videos of him actually talking about it, but there's a lot of other people talking yeah. about it because, you know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. You know, thinking about him moving up and being multiple time, multiple division world champion. I don't want to get in front of our skis, you know, so to speak. I'd like to see how he looks at 75. Um, you know, I do know he's a much bigger guy. He was, yeah, I think he was very, very heavy when he was younger and has come down from well, well over 200 pounds. And I still think he does get up there pretty, pretty high in between fights. Um, so I, I think he'll be fine at 75, but we got to see how the body reacts at that weight class. When you're a different, when you're in a different weight class, you're a different machine. And we got to see how that machine works um, at 175 before we can start talking about cruiserweight and then eventually heavyweight. Um, but listen, he's young, he's talented, he's got a, a, a lot of fantastic skills. He's he's one of my favorite fighters today in terms of you know being exciting. So uh, I think the 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 opportunities are going to be vast for him. But let's see how he does on Saturday first. All right, what about the timing, Paul? When we talk about the the 175 pound division, better be a not a spring chicken, 39 years old, Bevel getting a little bit older as well. Even the heavyweights we've been talking about might be at the end of the run. Could the timing be right for him to not only make an impact light heavyweight, but maybe beyond that as well? The timing when you're in your prime is always terrific as far as to make the move you want to make. Right. Uh, when we talk about Michael Moore, he also won the he uh, heavyweight title against a former cruiserweight. So it was uh, also, you know, the, the, the situation also suited him and benefited him. The heavyweights were smaller back then, and, and Evan Holyfield had been a cruiserweight himself, so he was also a guy who would come up to heavyweight. Uh, in an era where these massive heavyweights are 6'5", 6'4", yes, Usyk is a former cruiserweight as well. But, you know, it's like just when I start to think we're getting a little smarter in boxing, then I go, oh, man. Then you read the it's, comments It gets section. so get stupid. It. Dude, where, remember a couple of years ago <laughs> that we were having this conversation about Canelo fighting Usyk? That it was actually so stupid that people well, didn't know what to do, how to react yeah. when yeah. they asked him that yeah. question. It, it was a, a reaction that went viral. That's how stupid he thought that question was. What, what are we, back at it again here, guys? Yeah. What, what are we doing? And think about what's happened in Usyk and Canelo since that was even brought up. Think about how stupid that, that sounded then and how much more dumb it, that sounds now in hindsight with the way their careers have gone since that stupid, stupid analogy and stupid possibility. I mean, I like to say boxing fans are smarter than MMA fans, and then we bring up conversations like this, and I'm like, ah. Oh. I like to stick up for the you guys are making fans, you look bad, yes. man. Come on, you guys are making yourselves look bad. Man. Yeah, but come on. I mean, it's a lot of boxing. It's, it's a lot of boxing pundits too. The guys who are talking about it. Like I said, he doesn't no, bring it up, but they're, 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 no, that's the problem. The yeah. fighters are smarter. No. It's 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 the pundits that are idiots. All right, so sorry we, guys. Sign up. Sign up. As a fellow pundit, Teddy, do you think it's ridiculous that Benavidev, a big super middleweight, now going to light heavyweight, might have heavyweight aspirations? What's your thought on it? having coached Michael Moore yourself? Listen, you're putting a card way at, you're putting a card way ahead of the horse. I mean, Paulie's right on the money with this. I mean, let's get back to Realville. You know, we we like to live in Realville here. You know, I know everybody likes to let themselves go out to these places. It's it makes more entertaining conversation and television, all that. But you know, I think our credibility uh, for what we have is based on real stuff and where we've been with that real stuff. And right now, it's not real stuff to be talking about Benavides going to heavyweight when we don't even know if he can beat Alexander Volzik. We don't know if he can get past the winner of Bevo and better be if. So, I mean, if you want to throw round names, throw Jai Obataya. He's been fighting in Saudi Arabia. He's a cruiserweight champ. Talk about him going up to heavyweight. That probably makes a little bit more sense since he's a step closer to it right now. He's undefeated and he's a good puncher. Talk about him if you want. But right now to do it just because, you know, he's the flavor of the moment. He's the name we're talking about and we want to put a little extra spice on it. No. A good steak is a good steak. You don't have to put any sauce on it, anything. It's a good steak. This is a good steak. So when you overcook it, it's no good, Teddy. When you overcook it, it's no good. No, <laughs> don't fire, overcook man, it. it. Don't, do not do that. Because like they said in the Raging Bull, you know, when you overcook it, you defeat its own purpose. You know, bring it over. Bring it That's over. It. If anything, talk about the cruiserweights. Teddy's got a great point. Another guy that Benavidez could maybe be talked about in discussions with is Udo Ramirez. Yeah. You know? yeah. We're going to talk about heavyweights? Yes, yes. Talk about yeah. heavyweights. Not cruiserweights, <laughs> not like heavyweights. Talk about heavyweights. Well, cooking is what we exactly. love to do here at ProVox TV. We always have it. And one person is certainly cooking right now is Canelo. Some comments from Benavidez. Benavidez, are they the right move right after this? June 28th.
Live from the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C., WBA Super Featherweight World Champion Lamont Roach Jr. will defend his title against undefeated challenger, fearless Fergal McCrory of Ireland. Catch all the action live in Washington, D.C. on ProBox TV, or even better, download the ProBox TV app. We know he's a great boxer, but Lamont Roach Jr. said in front of my hometown crowd, I am getting the knockout against Frogel McCoy, the very tough Irishman. He says, don't blink. It's going to be special. Check it out June 28th. We will all be ringside. We're discussing, of course, David Benavides, his jump up to light heavyweight notwithstanding. Apparently not leaving Canelo behind. Said in a recent interview, the best version of Canelo was the one who beat Gennady Golovkin in their first fight, quote, on steroids, taking a jab at Canelo. Wise idea. Is he talking about the girlfriend who says, you know, maybe we can still get back together and make this fight happen? Poking the bear a little bit. What are your thoughts on his comments, Paulie? I don't know. I, I, I told you that fight's never going to happen. I've been saying it. I love being right. I love I, I, I love being right. I, 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 it's just it's something I'm used to doing. I don't I don't. I don't it know makes you easier to work it. with. It, Everything, just, yeah. I love being And then you know what? I don't rub it in. I don't let you know that I'm right again. I'm, I'm, he's not going to fight this guy. It's not going to happen. I mean, the, he can't even keep up with his own excuses. He made like he wasn't going to fight Benavidez because he was well, disrespected him or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, but, then, but, then, but then he let Oscar disrespect him, and he gave Oscar the payday instead when he fought Munguia just to avoid Benavidez. Come on. It's, it's not going to fight him. Uh, is it a similar thing to you? Talking about the ex-girlfriends never getting back together with you? Why you well, talking? I mean, th there was all this talk like, well, you know, he gave Munguia the fight because you know, he was respectful and Benavidez is not getting the fight because he's not respectful. And people are like, well, all right, well, Benavidez is not going to start being respectful now because, listen, if you're not going to fight the guy, you're not going to fight the guy whether or not you're nice to him or mean to him or right. talking shit or not. So it doesn't really matter. And uh, and, and another thing, it's not the ex-girlfriend that everyone did. It's the guy that slapped you and you took it and you didn't do anything about it. That's the guy. It's actually, that's the analogy. This guy's disrespecting you now. He's taking jabs at you. You're still not fighting him. It's not the ex-girlfriend. It's the guy who slapped you in your face and is telling you you're a punk and you're still not fighting him. Well, that's what it is. So that, and that's, that's exactly the point. Where I think David Benavides, David Benavides should go full steam ahead. Keep talking shit. Keep doing this. Keep doing this. I mean, why, why not? It's entertaining. It's something for us to talk about. And also, I mean, or, you're embarrassing the guy. Or... Just vacate the titles. I've also said it's not That's even a good fight. Yep. Vacate the titles and let, well. let the yeah. titles open I still up think it's a good fight. I want to see the fight. I, st you know, I, I think it's a good fight. I don't, well, I don't, I don't, we would all love to see it, but, but the idea, Paul, you talked about is the titles. Well, the mandatories that are coming up don't seem to have a whole lot of appeal to Canelo Alvarez. Turkey Al Sheik, his money could happen. It certainly could be done if there's enough money on the table. Uh, Teddy, your thoughts on this, on this fight and, of course, Benavides' comments about being on steroids for the first fight. Look, they, I mean, he was talking about Canelo for two seconds. Uh, he tested positive. You can't get around that. I mean, yep. you know, you could talk about how it's the Mexican beef and everything else and all that stuff. You know, um, I would think that with all the money he makes, he could eat Colby beef. You know what I mean? He don't, he don't need to be eating stuff that's tainted with uh, stuff that's got PEDs in it or that could make you test positive. Uh, for PEDs. So we already know that he has tested positive for that, but that nobody cares because if you're the golden goose at the end of the day, you know, you're going to be protected, especially in this business. You're going to be taken care of. There's certain guys that they will always keep their title, no matter how inactive they are, no matter what happens. We've seen it. I don't even want to go through the list of names. And why? Because they are the favorite sons of somebody. You know, they are the protected ones. And that's how this business works. As far as the fight ever happening with Benavides and with Canelo, I, I'm i with Paulie. The only difference here, everything Paulie said has been right. The only difference is since he said that, there's a new man in town. There's a new sheriff in town. He's called Turkey al Sheik, His Excellency. And he's turning the boxing world upside down. He's making fights that could never be made, were never going to be made before. And with his money, with that money, now, in this game, 
there's a possibility that that fight will be made where Paulie was right. It wasn't going to be made. But then when you start having a guy in the conversation that wasn't in the conversation before that's bringing or making it possible to bring anywhere from 150 to $200 million, you know, then, then you're talking about whether a guy wants to fight or doesn't want to fight, he will fight. When yeah, you're talking Teddy, about uh, that kind of money. Te Teddy, when we took Turkey's temperature and the thermometer, it read casual because he wants the Canelo and Crawford fight. He didn't want the, he, he doesn't even mention the Benavides fight. So I don't know that, I don't know that, the, that that's the one on, yeah, on the but, cards. No, I get what you're saying, Paulie, but he has, there has been mention of it. He did mention it a while. It went off the radar fast, uh, but it was on the radar, I'd say about two months ago, maybe two, two and a half months ago. Uh, he, he did mention, and then all of a sudden, that's when you heard Canelo chirping a little bit. All of a sudden, he went from, you know, deadline, where the patient was dead. You know, no, just a straight line. Flat line, flat line, was, flat line. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, flat line. All of a sudden, there was beep, 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 beep. <laughs> there was a little life, because all of a sudden, you heard Canelo saying, well, you know, if the money's right, there's got to be a lot. And then all of a sudden, Turkey Alice Sheik, came into the mention a little bit and mentioned, you know, the, the read the little possibility into the possibility that that could be a fight well, with the I, kind of money I, that he could bring. I got an idea here, Paulie, and this is, this is where you, you, may, you may be wrong. I think Turkey is a smart man, and he understands that. If Canelo comes out and puts out, a, puts out his first offer of how much money it's going to take, Turkey's going to be like, nope, move on, next, and then he's going to come back to it. This is negotiation. This is classic negotiation. I, I, Turkey's not going to let Canelo dictate how much money he's going to pay him. He's going to go true. and look outside and look around. If this is the fight that he wants to see, if this is the fight that the well, Turkey listens true, to Chris. the people, right, Teddy? He's a man. He's man the, the kind people. of man that's used to being in charge. Man, so yes. You don't tell Turkey yeah. how much you're paying him. No, about? you're right. I mean, he'll wind up paying exorbitant money at the right. end of the day. But it'll be but on, but it'll it's be on the his the way accord. you get there. You're right. It's the way you get there. But you're not going to lead the way. He's going to lead it. What are you? What about that? All that Kobe beef stuff, but all that money, he could give Kobe beef to both guys in the training camp. Nobody would fail the test. There you go. Kobe, did you get Kobe beef? No. I didn't get Kobe We've beef. We've solved no, well, the problem. All he needs is his own beef shipped in. Speak, Kobe beef? Speaking of beef, oh, yeah. we got Kobe little... beef for everybody. Guys, Kobe we need, beef for right, we need a Kobe beef sponsor. Speaking exactly. of beef, that's right. Oscar De La Hoya not letting go of his beef with Canelo on a social corner. We'll get that right after this. Canelo, I just saw another video where you're still talking shit. All you say is, fuck him, fuck that. Oh, he stole from me. Well, obviously, aside from defaming me, why don't you look inside your own circle? Because I know for a fact that people are stealing from you. Um, by the way, you lined my pockets. You made me a shitload of money. All because you're afraid of David Benavides. Fuck you. Welcome back, ProBox TV, Deep Waters Boxing Social. New segment we're going to do where we respond to things on social media. Subscribe, put your comments in. Maybe we'll comment on something you have said, but Oscar De La Hoya spitting gold, spitting heat from the beginning. What do you think of this continued beef, Oscar, man? I'm calling Oscar the Burger King because he's the king of beef at this point. That is so funny. He holds on to everything. But apparently it's yeah. a response because he says he's been talking about me. Where's the original? Where's the Canelo uh, uh, talk, No. Is it, he, he, I haven't heard anything. Apparently, but, he says this is a response to yeah. Canelo still talking. Teddy, did you hear anything? No, I haven't heard. I just want to know what kind of wine he's drinking. That's all. <laughs> well, that's another thing. I'm sure when it's you, very, I'm sure it's very another, expensive. Well, that's another thing. Uh, when you well, go to rehab, are you not supposed to drink anymore? It's supposed to be clean, <laughs> clean, clean. But, well, you know. well, that, well, it depends. He's California, what, he's California it sober. Does, right. It depends what rehab you go if, if you're going to rehab at Napa Valley, you can drink wine. All right? <laughs> that's, a, that's still quality, though. Yeah, hey, that's the case that I can't Teddy, blame him. Teddy, if I ever go to rehab, send me, send me to Napa. Uh, that's that's yeah, the kind of rehab I can get handed. I will. Handle. That's good quality. I, if we I have the money, Napa, that's where we're and sending you. I will you. come and visit you. Yes. You know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we're all going to go together. That's right here on Pro Box TV. This has been Deep Waters. As always, thank you so much for watching. Leave your comment. Maybe we'll be talking about you next time.